So this is a horror movie, <clears throat> superhero, vigilante, but an extreme horror movie. Action though, too. And it takes place today. It's about an FBI agent who is tasked with, in New York, who's tasked with finding a particular ring of child sex slave uh, villain, a gang, like an, an extension of a Mexican cartel gang. And they work in the U.S. and they handle child abductions, even prostitution, even of adults and everything. They're, they're, they do drugs and all kinds of stuff. Her task is to find, I think, one specific important kid or just bust the ring itself. But during her, her investigations, sometimes she finds a lot of her suspects dead in mysterious and nasty ways, um, like ripped apart, like just like by some supernatural creature. And so she um, ends up working with another FBI person in the in the movie, where it's his job to look for the vigilante that's killing her suspects. And so they end up working together and pooling their resources. And so she wants to bust the, the gang that's doing the uh, child stuff. But at the same time, she's also very interested in, in investigating who this vigilante superhero dude is. And the movie is about her finding out who the, who the supernatural being is and busting the gang. But you got to go back to the early 1600s. Early 1600s. A conquistador with a small army or whatever, and, uh, and he's in charge of a region. It's his, he's doing conquistador shit, but he's in bad health. Um, and he's also going insane from, 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 uh, from another disease, from some disease, so he's in bad health. And he's looking for a cure, he's praying to Jesus. And he gets word of a native kid who was born into some mysterious na uh, native tribe, an Incan uh, tribe, who is like this holy child. He's like a Buddha, or he's like a Jesus Christ, but he can heal anything. And his tribe, this, this native tribe, <clears throat> this kid, his tribe moves around, um, super mysterious, and other tribes people are, are able to bring him their sick and their injured, and the kid will heal them. The kid is tribe is super peaceful they don't know they don't use bows and arrows i think they mostly live by trade and people bring them food so he's like a holy man he's he's the golden child or whatever so um very spiritual people the conquistador sends a platoon out to find this kid it may take him a year it may take him months i don't know but he eventually finds the kid massacres his tribe and takes the kid back to his castle he demands the kid heal him. And the kid tries. The kid's like, you killed my whole village, and that's really sad because I had a mom and a, and, a, and a good friend there. And the guy's like, I know, I'm sorry about that. Heal me. And the kid's not eloquent. He doesn't talk like a prophet. He doesn't spout out wisdom. He's super, he reminds you of Powder from the movie Powder. He's very timid and innocent and, and calm and meditative. And he tells the... Um, the conquistador, I can't heal you. There's something wrong with you. And there's something the kid has never come across before. He's never met a person with a corrupt soul. And for some reason, that interferes with his ability to heal. <clears throat> so even the kid doesn't really know why. The conquistador is frustrated with him and says, Until you heal me, <clears throat> I'm going to lock you in my dungeon, basement dungeon. Cold, dark, stone, no life around. And this slowly works on the kid, kind of like in the movie Starman with Jeff Bridges. It just, he's, his health goes down. He starts to get pale. He was just a normal native-looking kid with beads and crap. And, but now he's, like, dwindling, and, and the guy will come in there every once in a while and say, Heal me, you satanic, demonic thing. You're of the devil with these weird pagan powers, and I demand you, you, know, you help me in the name of Jesus. Anyway, the kid keeps telling him, I can't. I'll try again. I can't. And the guy... The guy does some sick stuff in front of the kid to try and get the kid to activate his powers. Like, the conquistador takes his very own, like, pet bird and, like, <clears throat> like crushes it in front of the kid. And the kid's like, eh, why would you do that? And then and um, leaves it on the ground. And the kid instinctively grabs the bird. And you see him, like, holding it. And, and the bird 
comes alive. And the guy's like, see, I need you to do that shit for me. And the kid, um, he grows cons continuously frustrated with the kid. And um, <clears throat> he ends up, uh, he beats the kid up a little bit. Um, he's basically the only one that steps into the kid's cell to like intimidate him. Sometimes he's having a fit of madness and just starts and is yelling at the kid and smacks him around a bit and says, heal me, heal me, I'm dying. And eventually he, um, the kid, he's trying to look for leverage against the kid, but he doesn't have any. So <clears throat> one day he notices, he looks through the cell and he sees that the kid has a, a, a gathering of cockroaches have come into the kid's cell to hang out with him because they're the only life form that can get in there. And this pisses off the, um, the conquistador. <clears throat> and he sees the kid and the kid has cockroaches all over him and he's holding, he, and he makes friends with this one particularly odd looking cockroach that maybe has some discoloration and the kid talks to it and he's like you know I want to run through the fly I want to run well, be with my family out in the woods again and they're all massacred so I'll just think of good shit while I got these cockroaches hello good cockroach friends and the kid stops eating and he went, he gives it to the cockroach kids if he eats, eats it all the kid may not even eat it all he's like supernatural but anyway <clears throat> the guy <clears throat> the guy the conquistador gets so frustrated with the kid that he goes into his cell one day and goes this is satanical crap going on in here you got cockroaches all over you. you're of the devil you're a pagan kid without the lord and so he grabs the um he's done with the kid and he grabs the kid's cockroach <clears throat> and he's like he's like he's like i'm gonna you know i'm gonna kill you but before you die you're gonna you're gonna know that you can kill something too that you are not some super holy being and so he shoves it in the kid's mouth, hoping that the and, and makes the kid swallow it. Now this sends the kid into an uproar because the 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 kid understands that eating destroys things. So the kid, in this crazed fit of 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 emotion, trying to save this cockroach that he's forced to swallow, tear he starts tearing his own chest open. There's blood and everything. It's really horrible. And um. <clears throat> the guy stands back and watches this kid tear four lines over here and four lines over here through his chest all the way down to his lungs there's just gore everywhere this is a horror film and the guy's watching this going i knew you were satanico i knew this is all satanic shit there's cockroaches everywhere and you're ripping your body apart so the kid is just is just in this in frenzied emotional state yelling no and trying to stop the um cockroach from being digested anyway the dude just says that's it evil satanical kid and hits him once really good in the face and the kid hits the wall and dies they throw his body out in the pile and back with other natives like a mass grave that night all the cockroaches that were on the that were friends with the kid all flow you see the kid laying on the on the natives and the cockroaches all flow into his mouth Ooh. And and you assume that they go inside him and, and just like and, and you don't know what happens, but that's when the <clears throat> that's when the camera cuts and you come to our day in the future. Sounds wicked, don't it? This is a nightmare of a of a of a super villain though, I mean, of a of a vigilante though. This guy is a nightmare. Um, so um, <clears throat> either that night or like a day or two later or something, the kid has been transformed. The cockroach that he swallowed is now is now like an immortal cockroach inside him. The kid has full command of cockroaches of all kinds, and they pretty much make up his whole body. So if you were to cut his arm off with a sword, he regenerates. He could probably regenerate his entire arm out of cockroaches. This is disgusting. <laughs> but you would see cockroaches just going... Re refilling and, and regenerating him. And cockroaches just pouring out would crawl over. This is this is wicked. Anyway, he has now he's now turned into a, a full adult, like six one, six six two. He's super, he's pale. He's got his raggedy black hair, and his eyes are gone. They're now just cockroaches behind there. Basically, he has he has just made up of cockroaches. He's a he's weird weird super being. <clears throat> he goes into the castle, and. And 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 massacres all the guards, like 150 guards, and gets to the main conquistador dude. And the dude's like, "What the fuck is you know who? 
who you know who the hell are you and he's and, it, and he doesn't say anything he's now like an angel of death he's a demon all of his holy powers he had to heal and create goodness which if left alone this kid probably could have like been a been a, a savior like character of all of the americas or something you know who knows how far this kid could have gotten if, if this guy hadn't done all this stuff and now the kid so the kid grabs him and um summons a small pile of cockroaches in his hands and while the guy's screaming like el diablo <laughs> he grabs, he shoves the cockroaches in the guy's mouth and holds him and it's rad it's a rad way for this guy to go because he just did the same thing to the kid and so the kid holds his mouth open. You see him going, oh, and cockroach is actually coming out his nose. And and I don't know if they can come out of his eye, but they're just like all over his face. And the guy's just sitting there going, ah. So he basically chokes and gags the guy on cockroaches. And this is his M.O. as a vigilante. You already are creeped out. I'm fucking creeped out talking about it. <laughs> so he's, he's he, and you love this vigilante character. He's a nightmare of a being. But he go his mission now. After this, he becomes <clears throat> legend. Like he's hunted by a different platoon of conquistadors. This is all backstory, and he kills those dudes like 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 fifty other dudes, um, and he becomes a legend because you, the locals learn how to summon him. Like if you do a certain type of prayer or if you pray for a, anything related to children, this guy is the defender of, the protector of. Um, He's like a patron saint. He's he's a he's a elemental force now. He's he, anyway, he he will either get revenge on your kid or he will find your kid if if your kid is taken. And in those days, that that happened a lot. So this is a great legendary character, mysterious, deadly character. So and that's him. He becomes legend. And there's stone writings about him. There's 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 like old carvings and rocks and little um. Uh, not amulets, but um, foci, uh, little miniatures of him carved in stones that archaeologists today find, and they're like, they're like, they call him the the empty one, the holy one, or the vacant one, Ombre Vacante or whatever, but he has a name, and we have to make a cool name for him. I just call him the ho uh, hollow hollow man, but um, <clears throat> he uh, so now you fast forward to the um, FBI agent up in the future. And she's on his trail. He, he uh, over the centuries, moved his way north, finding bad guys. And, like, in the early... That's the last you hear of who he is. He's just legend from then. But somewhere in the 1920s or 30s, the first modern record of his activities gets recorded in some place in uh, Mexico. I was thinking Mexico City. And... It, there's documents and eyewitness accounts of what he looked like when he came through a house massacring bad guys and there's like a kid will witness it sometimes sometimes an adult gets lucky who had who wasn't a bad person but was in the in the room and when hollow man was there and got a look at him so there's eyewitness accounts from like the 30s and or in the 20s but then there's then and and he people cops investigate him you know but then you don't hear from him for a couple de decades because he's He's no longer, he, he goes from killing organized crime members to sometimes just local priests who are just molesting kids. He'll, he'll find that dude, and that dude gets, there's, and like I said, the, the, the conquistador made him swallow that cockroach and punched him super hard in the face. So this, this super villain, this superhero vigilante, has, has those, those are his two ways of killing people, his M.O., so you can find victims with their throats, with these little scars all over inside, like as if bugs were in there. And there's cockroach DNA in there, and that's creepy. And so you're like, okay, this is his M.O. And then you sometimes find a dude punched through the face so hard that the whole face collapse or their jaw just busts off. A punch from this dude can send you through most walls and just mur it kills you instantly. It'll crush your chest and nothing. So those are his two superpowers, because that's what the conquistador taught him. Um, so, you don't hear of him for a long time until the 70s and 80s, still in Mexico City, and and he's like Batman, he's like the dreaded fear of the underworld, is this character called, like, Ombre Vacante or whatever, and, uh, and it's just a legend, not everybody believes it, it's not like he's killing 20 guys at a time, he's killing just, like, one dude, 
every like six months, you know, so or one dude every four months sometimes, or sometimes three in one house, like in one night, and then you don't hear from him for a year. So it's just on and off, depending on where his own investigation takes him to find people who harm children. And um, what else does he do? Oh, so he made his way. His his own investigation led him to New York to capture us this this a, a gang. And it happens to be the same gang that the FBI chick is is looking for. She's looking for uh, the same gang, and so she keeps coming across evidence of him. Her her suspects keep being found choked to death with little scars in their mouth and nose, with this horrified look on their face, <laughs> and and the other and then they she sometimes finds them with their arms ripped off and their faces punched in or their chest punched in. So she knows that it's it's Hollow Man. She knows it's him. But she thinks it's a copycat killer. The FBI thinks this is a series of vigilante cop kill, uh, uh, copycat killers who keep taking over the role. Because they, who, what serial can, killer can last 80 years? You know. So they think it's a, a a vigilante who just simply dons the mantle of the legendary Hollow Man from from the South America, so that he can kill bad guys. That's what they think. That's what she thinks. But, and she has phone calls with a, um, a, a guy who did it in Mexico City, who did investigate, who was on the trail of Hollow Man. And she has only two calls with him during the film. At the beginning, he sends her some files and he helps her out and he's like, good luck. I've been looking for 20 years. And then the next call she gets is near the end of the film when she gets him to admit. She's like, she's like, you never told me. Do you, th do you agree that these are copycat killers? Like logic would dictate? Can you, can you straighten that out for me? And the Mexican agent guy goes I'm sorry to tell you but I over the years I I think it I think he's real I think he's the real the real hollow man from hundreds of years ago and she's probably like really really uh, so so <clears throat> we create a legend with this guy he is a, he's a legendary character um, in uh, in the film, he, he ends up coming across, he lives in a storm drain, by the way, in New York, in a ghetto neighborhood where he can fit in because he looks like a homeless dude. I drew him like this. But for this character to be agile, I say it looks like anime. It's like a mixture of the, a, a, a beer-bellied dude <laughs> that's anime. <laughs> so anyway, but his clothing, if just so you know what kind of superhero he is, he's barefoot. He wears sweatpants with a little rope holding his pants together and a tank top or a t-shirt and then just a simple quilt around him. The reason why is, for one, being a homeless guy helps him fit in with most local populations. The blanket is actually, the quilt he wears is in his, his memory of the quilt that the conquistador gave him in his cold dark cell. That was the only thing the conquistador gave him. So the kid kept that wrapped around him, a quilt, for those weeks that he was in that cell. So this character it can't, it basically lives in the past continuously. So he carries this blanket. That's what he looks like as a homeless guy. So if you saw him walking down the street, you'd think either he's a dudist or he's a, a homeless guy, a homeless, dick, a homeless guy. And he has to wear sunglasses, and he'll pick up any kind he can because under his, under his eyes are just cockroaches. Um, and his hair is all ratty. I was thinking of having him shaved head because that would make him look scary, but he, I want him to have ratty Aztec ink and, or whatever hair. <clears throat> um, and uh, so anyway, he uh, one day he's coming home from killing somebody, and there's blood all over his outfit. And... <laughs> <clears throat> and you could see bullet holes in him. And he heads back every day at sunrise um, to go sleep. And when he's passing by this particular neighborhood that he walks through all the time, cause he's, and he's actually in that, he actually is looking for part, um, that gang in his own neighborhood. He knows there's a dude somewhere around there that lives in his neighborhood, but he doesn't know who. So in his free time, he kind of walks through that area uh, on his way home and to, to work. <laughs> And, um, but otherwise, he doesn't really eat. Just the cockroaches in his body need to eat. Um, he, he, he's immortal. He can regenerate anything. Um, as long as that one cockroach inside him stays alive, he can live forever and replenish himself with nearby cockroaches. So he lives in a storm drain, like I said, that looks like the, that reminds him of the cell he's in. And this is a weird and creepy thing about him that during daylight, 
most of the time during the daylight, he reverts back to his child self, who looks just like he did before he died. And he's in the storm drain with cockroaches, like a huge infestation of cockroaches. And he lives on a mattress in a dark corner in there. And um, with maybe some light cascading down from somewhere up above, but, but that's about it. Um, and during the day, he's in there talking to his cockroach. It's very Silent Hill-ish. It's very ghost-like, a ghost-like thing, where he basically relives his last few weeks where he had a, his friend, the cockroach. And at the, in the current time in this film, he has no memory of the good times he had with his village before. He can't remember that stuff at all. So he's just this nightmare creature who constantly lives, relives those last few weeks he was alive, uh, petting this cockroach and talking to it and, and stuff like that. So if you were a city worker and you came down there during the uh, daytime and found him, you might come across a kid down there. And he might even offer to heal you. He might say, I can heal you. But wouldn't that be creepy? A kid covered in cockroaches on a mattress <laughs> sitting there who looks like an Aztec fucking native going, I can heal you, sir. You need to leave is what you need to do. Uh, uh, and Because if he has a... And he might heal you. If you were to come up to him, the kid might say, give me your hands. And you might heal you of some weird uh, ailment that you have that you don't know. But if... The kid has a flashback that you're the conquistador coming into his cell. You're going to get torn to pieces by him. He's going to kill you. So anyway, that makes him really creepy and rad, don't it? <clears throat> um, but anyway, he's basically a nine-year-old, what he was when he died, stuck in this adult monstrous body. This, this, But he's really thin, pale. He's cut, though. He looks like powder. Anyway, on his w way home one day, there's a mom that lives in an apartment building and her son coming out of an apartment and there happens to be a construction site nearby and a, and a whole pallet full of like cinder blocks falls off like a four-story building and is coming down on the mom and kid and a hollow man just happens to be walking by, you know, and looks up and sees it. The mom sees it, grabs her kid and huddles down into a ball. She knows she's not going to be able to jump out of the way in time, but... Hollow Man, who have, who's the defender of children, the patron saint, the vigilante of children. He has no choice. He moves across the street like a 50-foot leap. He makes it in lightning speed whoosh, and cut and puts himself over the over the mom and kid, and the, the cinder blocks just crash all around. And he is fucked up. And the construction guys run down there and pull everything off, and, and the mom and kid are okay. <laughs> but Hollow Man's all tore up. He, he's been shot all night, killing somebody. Now he got cinder blocks dropped on him. He's he's out of it. So the mom threatens to sue, and she's gonna sue and all that. But she she takes the she takes Hollow Man. She's like, "Oh, you poor homeless man! Thank you for saving us. How did you move that fast? Come inside." And they take him inside, and and she's like, "Sit down." And she's like, "Let me check you for injuries. You know, I'll call the hospital." And and he waves. Hollow Man doesn't talk. He just waves at her and he's like, and she's like, really, we got to, we should call somebody. You could got to be injured. And then she's like, okay, well then I'll check your injuries. And she searches his arms and neck and she's looking around and <clears throat> um, he put, when she reaches up to pull his sunglasses off, he kind of pushes her hand away. He's like, no, 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 no. And she's like, okay, fine. Well, and she lifts up his shirt. She starts lifting. And for a quick second for the girls, you see he's got a, uh, 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 he's got a rad six pack and but she's going to lift his shirt more and you just for a quick second she sees a glimpse of a scar of one of the finger lines that he tore into his chest there's she can see she lifts it and sees something just briefly move underneath there because there's straight up cockroaches underneath the skin crawling around and luckily he pushes her hand away before she can get it. She can totally know what that is. She mostly just think, is, thinks of it, thinks it's a scar. So she knows this dude's like odd and probably been through some horrific things. But anyway, she's like, okay, you don't talk. You won't let me look at your eyes. You have a weird scar on your chest that you don't want me to look at. I understand you're a touchy homeless dude. Well, look, you do smell kind of bad. Um, you're not going to let me take you to the hospital. Here's some food. And what Hollow Man notices is that this lady and her son look look not look look and remind him of his mom and his friend that he had and keep in mind this whole movie is is about mexican americans it this is a legend created for for central americans for 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 
the, the, the Mayan, Aztec, Incan, I don't give a shit, Central America, this is a Central American superhero. Um, and so all the characters are either are Mexican, uh, they're all Central American, in, in one way or another. <clears throat> And because uh, this movie is all about their legend, I don't want more fucking white uh, superheroes, dude. We need a badass, all American, Native American fucking legend from the South, dude. That would be the shit. So, um, so anyway, they become friends. He he's attracted to the mom and kid. He as as uh, as a memory that he can't remember, um, but she's like. I've seen you in the neighborhood. I've seen you walk through here. You must live nearby. And the, even the son's like, yeah, we've seen you uh, passing down the street. I'll tell you what, you're a great kid guy. Here's some, here, you want to eat something? And he, he eats only sugary stuff because, of course, he's filled with uh, cockroaches. And um, the mom's like, if I see you, if I win a lawsuit or something, I'm going to find you and I'm going to split the money with you for saving our lives. And, and, and thank you so much, you're going to be a hero around here now. And she, and when he leaves and goes home, she does go around the neighborhood, and she's like, you know that homeless dude, he saved our, he saved us from that falling shit from the customer. So he becomes like a little bit of a, a talked about thing in that, just that neighborhood. And everybody's seen him around, they're like, yeah, we know him, he's just some quiet dude. We see him sitting on the corner over here sometimes. They don't know he's a monstrous demon <laughs> from, from, from hell, from, from, <laughs> from the south. Anyway. Turns out, this mom and her kid, the mom is, has a boy, bad bad luck with boyfriends. Her boyfriend is a low-ranking member of the gang that Hollow Man's looking for. He's the guy that Hollow Man's been looking for, but Hollow Man doesn't know that yet. Um, and the boyfriend happened to pull up when she saw him patting him on the back and hugging him, and the kid hugging him. The boyfriend pulls up, and he's jealous. He's a jealous piece of shit. And he's like, fuck is this homeless dude and he and they and he goes up to his girl and he's like who the fuck is that dude you cheating on me bitch <laughs> and and she's she's like he saved my son's life you asshole and he's and i was thinking it could be her boy uh her brother instead who lives with her instead of a boyfriend maybe just a brother would be cool um and later in the film the mom and son, um, son get to know Hollow Man, like not know him, but they like, they like have fun with him. Like they they say here, you know, you need to like, here first off, I'm gonna give you a T-shirt. You know, you're wearing a disgusting shirt with what looks like blood on it. Can I can I give you this shirt? Will you wear it? And and it's and it's a funny shirt. You don't see it at the moment, but it's an I Love New York shirt. <laughs> and she's like, I got you a shirt, a clean new shirt here. And I got you some new sweatpants. And if you want a new blanket, here. And it's and it's a cool blanket like that her grandma gave to her. And so he he's like, thank you. And they like hug again. And he takes it home and he puts it nicely in the corner of his lair. But they get to know each other over the weeks. And in between all this, you're watching the FBI agent who's looking for Hollow Man. She finds a dead Catholic priest with his head ripped off by human hands or something. And she's like, oh, our man was here again. El, uh, Andre Vacante, fucking the vacant one. And so she's <laughs> trying to figure out the mystery and what's going on and who the copycat killer is. All the while, the the brother of the of the mom and the, and the son, he gets, he gets angry at Hollow Man for being around, for being a hero to, the, to his nephew. The nephew's like, I love him, dude. He's a superhero. And the, and the, the brother's like, a superhero? He's a fucking bum. He's a weird ass, creepy looking bum. And 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 uh, the and the mom's like, we're, we're gonna be friends with him. He saved your nephew's life. Forget that I said he was a boyfriend. I like better that he's an uncle or brother or, and her brother. And she's like, I don't like your weird ass friends over here. They creep me out. And um, one day, Hollow Man's in her apartment, hanging out, and they like they're having fun with him. They're like putting a bracelet on him. They're like, you look better with this bracelet. Or they give him a watch, a wristwatch or something. They're like, you know, they give him things that are cute, that make you have think, oh, wow, you would be rad if I was a little kid. And I was friends with a demon, a monstrous vigilante demon. That'd be so rad. So anyway, he's just around the house sometimes. And the boyfriend is cussing out the sister like, all right, we got this fucking homeless man. And, 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 and Hollow Man for a second flexes on the dude, like doesn't move out of his way. And you're like... 
<laughs> and you know that the brother's a piece of shit. So, and the brother was like, get out of my fucking way, hobo. And, you, and the hollow man doesn't really move, and the guys start kind of shoulder check hollow man. And so you're in the audience thinking, oh, oh, you're being an asshole to this century old monstrous being. You're dumb. You're very dumb. <laughs> and so you can't wait. And anyway, his between all this, the hollow man ends up getting closer to the gang, killing other members. There's a rad scene, uh, at, a scene where he's chasing dudes. And there's shootouts, and there's dudes blowing him away with machine guns, and he's just a nightmare when he's, he's, all you see when you see him running around in a room is just a huge quilt behind him, <laughs> like Dark Man, and with sweatpants and a t-shirt on, oh, taking gunfire, and, and making, and what's really creepy about him as a vigilante superhero is, if you could get Hollow Man to speak when he's Hollow Man, when he's, when he's a kid at home during the day, he, he'll speak normal to you. But as Hollow Man, he never speaks, and if he does, he screams with an augmented voice of a nine-year-old, of when he was nine-year-old when he died, which doesn't that just creep you out, this demonic thing. And here are some really creepy features about him. Um, he, when he wants to scare people, he'll look at you, and he usually is wearing sunglasses, but he'll lift them up if he really doesn't, if he really wants to, like, horrify you. He'll lift his sunglasses up. And and you, cockroaches will come out of his eyes, kind of like tears, and crawl around on his face. Now, if that wouldn't creep you out enough, if you were in the corner room going, please, 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 don't fucking kill me, angel of death. But he opens his mouth, and cockroaches come out, and just pour out of his mouth like a beard, and go, they actually crawl back around under his shirt again, and go back into his body. But he will do that and you will probably be so traumatized by that that if you were an associate of the people he's killing but not worthy of death yourself he might just do that to you he might just hold you and pull your eyes open and make you look at him while he just ah, pours out cockroaches and you would just be motherfucking retarded after that i would sit there going oh. and so he's he he's he's like i said he's an elemental force man he is not a good guy or a bad guy he defends anybody anything related to kids or children he comes after you or he defends uh, he doesn't care about murders court cases bank robberies he doesn't care about a lot of that stuff um, he may not be a fan of be somebody being raped too though he might come to your rescue he might come over there and and maybe not kill the dude but shove cockroaches in the dude and just make the dude fucking insane but um, so he's a rad, he's a vigilante. He's a cool super vigilante, super being. Dangerous as hell. But somewhere later down the film, a guy like some a guy like Jeffrey Epstein, Hollow Man goes after people like that. He would he can turn into cockroaches, leave his clothes outside in the alley, go use the ventricle systems, maybe even go through the sewer and come up through the toilet and reform. It takes a while. But he can reform while Jeffrey Epstein's in bed, sleeping. And you just see this creepy, humanoid-looking thing growing. And then he he forms, and he's fucking hollow man with no goggles, fully naked in there. And could just grab hit Repsy Epstein and just choke him. And co do the cockroach thing. And just kill him. Uh, remember the news story, the real news story about those um, two drug addicts who tied their kid up and left him in the closet and like a social worker found him and they did that because they didn't want the kid bothering them while they were getting high oh my god that's in the movie um hollow man <laughs> kills those kills that couple in the movie oh fuck yeah i want to put them in the film and unties the kid and like put pushes the kid out into a hallway where the neighbors heard all the screams can come out and be like oh we haven't seen you and you know little little tommy where have you been for like three weeks. Are your parents still high on drugs? Come here. And Hollow Man just kind of vanishes through the apartment. He's a superhero. He's a he's a radical force of darkness, and, but he's the protector of children. And uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, the film. There's a rad scene in the film where the 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 villains capture the FBI agent's kid, and are holding her and saying, you know, you're going to back off our investigation for just this week. Otherwise, your kid's going to disappear into our network. And so when the FBI agent's at home crying and, and like, just about to call it her, her rest of her FBI to help try and track the kids down, Hollow Man is in her house and, and behind her. Oh, this is epic. 
So the, the mom's crying and looks over and there's Hollow Man who she's been looking for. And she grabs her gun and hits the floor and she's like, don't fucking move. And he just stands there looking around in her, in her room and he looks over at like a picture of her and her own kid and goes and picks it up and she, she realizes, she's like, he's not here to kill me. She goes, she goes, you know, she goes, I think you're a copycat killer. There's no way you could be a, a, a 400, 500 year old dude. A 400 year old dude. And, um, and Hollow Man's not saying anything. He's just looking at stuff. And, um, she goes, you know where my kid is and you can probably help me get my kid, can't you? <laughs> and, 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 and Hollow Man just kind of like, maybe just nods at her. And he's all, and, and just like, he might do something like, come with me or whatever. <clears throat> and, um, they get in, uh, anyway, they end up making their way to a mansion at the end of the movie. And it's the bomb. She has to pick the lock while she's picking it. And Hollow Man's there. You're thinking, you're thinking, this is the shit. We got, we got this, this FBI agent chick who doesn't know. She knows that he's a, a vigilante nightmare of a murdering machine. But, so dude, she has teamed up with the right guy at the right time for this little mission she's about to do. So she's picking the lock to get in, and she, for the first time, sees Hollow Man sink down into a pile of cockroaches that use the doggy flap door, and it, and his clothes go with him on top of a pile of cockroaches into the house. And so she's like, "God Lord," and she's like, "I can't believe it. He really is the fucking legendary Hollow Man from Oh Jesus." So she picks the lock. She gets in there. There's like 20 dudes there. There is a big party going on. Real adult hookers going on. Music. But there's like five or six kids upstairs that are being ready to be transported somewhere. <clears throat> and the owner of this house is a Jeffrey Epstein dude. We got to have him in this film. Because this whole movie is about children. Protecting children. He's the leader of the group. And he has his own professional suit wearing bodyguards that he normally has around because he's a rich dude. But he, but then he. Th this is a party for the low life group that we've been seeing most of the film though the one that she's after and so there's like 20 dudes in this place there's drugs there's guns there's music blasting and so she's in this house with music blasting and she's moving hallway to hallway and and trying to look for a kid hollow man goes straight to the garage now hollow man's smart he need he needs a weapon to to finish this night successfully he had a, a melee weapon that's he doesn't use guns so he needs to find a proper weapon <clears throat> and um so he's in the garage and you see him with his, his glasses. It, by the end of the film, he's wearing World War II uh, pilot goggles, which look cool. And they stay on his head. The mom gave it to her. The mom and the kid said, look, your sunglasses keep falling off and shit. Here's some goggles. She goes, sorry that they were Nazi pilot goggles, but they'll at least stay on your face. Or any type of goggles. I don't care if he looks like Riddick. No, we don't want him to look like Riddick. That's why I was thinking pilot goggles. And, um, hell, he could wear ski goggles. I don't care. But... You see him looking up at a wall in the garage, and you hear music bumping from the next room, and like hooting and hollering, and you're like, "What's Hollow Man looking at?" And you see him looking like this, and then and then the camera cuts, and it shows that since this is a millionaire's house, there is every conceivable garden tool and landscaping tool you could imagine there. And you and the audience are going, "Oh my God, he's choosing he's choosing a weapon to fucking kill everybody with," and you're like, "This is red." And, and you see the camera pan. This is important. The camera pans across just a crowbar. And I want people in the audience to go, no, no, no. And then it'll, and then he gets to, like, passes a rake. He passes, like, a hatchet. And you see somebody go, yeah. And you hear somebody in the audience go, yeah. Then he gets to an axe. And I want the crowd in the audience to go, yes. Yes, Hollow Man. That's, that's the one we want to see. And then he passes by that. And you see a chainsaw. And, of course, everybody in the audience is going to be all, pick the chainsaw. <laughs> Pick the chainsaw. There's 20 dudes in there, fully armed. Pick the chainsaw. But eventually he settles on this tool that I don't know the damn name of. It's a real tool. If I can find it in time. I just drew it. I just drew it. But this is the tool. This is the tool he settles on. It's like a... That's for raking rocks. But when I saw this tool in my early 20s for the first time, I was like, what in God's name is that thing? And this side is a normal hoe, but this thing is heavy. And these things are, are the perfect width to, to either fit between your rib cage, if you used it as a weapon, or fit between, it has four forks, or fit between your eyes. 
and there's a killer scene where he jumps up into a, into a skylight rafter and actually swings this down onto, onto one of the bad guys walking through a hallway. Wham! Right through his eyes. And lifts him up into the skylight like an Alien 3. You just watch a dude, and the guy behind him watches him just go... <laughs> up into the thing. And, the, and so this is a... Remember, this is a horror, horror vigilante character. He is not a. He is not the good guy. He's he's a he's a, a demonic thing that when summoned is, is like the Terminator. So there's dudes. So anyway, he the place goes off full blast. There's dudes running around shooting everybody, shooting everything. There's some a couple guys actually shoot each other. So there's mass panic. The hookers all run, and a, and a, and it, um. At one point, a guy grabs a grabs one of the hookers and holds a gun to her head, and she's like, he's like, back up, back up, and ha or um. And the FBI agent girl pops in and shoots that dude. And Hollow Man just looks at her and then disappears. And she's like, fuck, I'm in a house with this nightmare, nightmare demon. But I need his help. And and there's one rad scene. And remember, I, and I didn't tell you this, but Hollow Man has a weakness. Um, if he ever scares a child or a child is angry at him, if they yell at him, it, it sends a shockwave that can destroy him like a uh, uh, blast him into just cockroaches and his clothes will hit the ground and he'll have to escape if a kid is ever afraid of him or angry at him and at one point in the middle of the film the the brother of the mom and son this is let's go way back for a second says i'm sick of you coming around my house with my nephew and my daughter you're just some weird creepy ass homeless dude and like pushes hollow man and hollow man grabs the brother by the throat lifts him off the ground like three feet and body slams him on the hood of the of the other gang member's car and the nephew yells at hollow man no like because he loves his uncle he likes his uncle the uncle's cool to him but when the kid yells you see hollow man hit by a wave of of energy when the kid yells and it just blows hollow man onto the ground boom and he's barely looks human his arms but you see cockroaches pour everywhere all over the hood of the car and the gang members actually whip his ass they're like this disgusting ass hobo carries around cockroaches with him bap 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 and the kid runs out yelling at them no he's my friend i don't want my uncle hurt or my friend hurt and so hollow man has to crawl and run off that happened in the middle of the film in this, and you learn that that he has that's his major weakness is that he can never scare or anger a child, and and in this in one part in the film one of the villain guys grabs one of the kids, uh, one of the thugs grabs kid and he's like he, he's like I know who you are I know you're you know uh, Ombre Vicante you're the you're the devil and 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 Hollow Man and luckily the kid's eyes are closed at first off and Hollow Man doesn't really he's not going to kill the guy without um the kid being safe he's got to save the kid that's his mo but he can't help but scare this guy for grabbing the kid and he does his thing his um cockroach just pull he looks at the dude because the guy's like i know you're the fucking devil fucking demon and hollow man's all <sighs> and puts his arms out like like witness me kind of thing like he pulls his blanket out of the way and there's bullet holes and blood all over him. but you see cockroaches pour out and the, and when he's doing that because he's angry at the guy, the kid opens his eyes and sees that and goes, nah, and like freaks. And, and Hollow Man is all, it, it, it injures him. The kid screams, and, and cockroaches blast all over, and Hollow Man hides his own face from the kid. And you see the kid going, oh my God. And, and Hollow Man's all like, like has to back up into the shadows and like get out of there. And, he, and, and the guy's like, holy God, yes, you know, whatever you just did, kid, the, the villain, uh, the, the demon has to obey. So that's rad. But anyway, uh, later on. But later on, he ends up killing everybody. He gets the FBI chick's kid back. He saves the other kids. And uh, and then we just move on. That's the end of the film. But here's the reason that this would be a rad movie. Number one, he's a Central American superhero kid character. Uh, which we need more. We need more, we need more South American and Central American superheroes. Number two... This is a legend of like this kid. This guy exists in the same um, universe as Jeepers Creepers. Uh, if you know Jeepers history, it's possible they came across each other. Uh, especially if Jeepers attacked children, it's possible Hollow Man fought Jeepers, uh, maybe a few times, or maybe they just avoided each other. You know, who knows? But Jeepers would be intrigued by Hollow Man and would definitely want to like tangle with him once. I would think, but um, 
he also hollow man is also um so the, uh what else can i tell you um uh Oh, the way that he kills, mostly with his bare hands, we don't get to see that a lot in films. We don't get to see people ripped apart by, by human hands. And that's a rad MO for a supernatural being. Like, somebody's got to do it eventually. We've got supernatural super serial killers, like in The Watchmen and, and other movies. But how intimate is that? When, Like in one scene, the most epic death I can think of that could be shown on, on TV, on movie, would be... At one point, a, a guy comes around a hallway room like, with a gun, and Hollow Man s s rams his two fingers up the dude's rib cage, lifts him off the ground two feet, and the guy's sitting there going, "Oh fuck!" And Hollow Man does his open his mouth thing, and the dude's all, "Ah!" <laughs> and then Hollow Man gra rams his other hand into the same hole, grabs a little bit of intestine and stuff, and this is epic. <laughs> He rips the dude in half. I mean, he pulls the dude, and he did, and intestines pour out. Oh, and he, his hand eventually reaches the pelvis, and the dude's holding on to him, holding on to Hollow's head, and going, ah, 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 and, ah, 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 and then there's cockroaches just pouring out and crawling on the dude. How creepy! How fucking creepy is that? It's so rad. And so. And then he pulls the dude in half and then just kind of chucks the body onto the ground. So imagine what another thug will think coming around that corner when Hollows are off killing somebody else somewhere else. And you see that on the ground, you're just going to be all, oh, oh, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, here's the fucking gun. I would jump out a kitchen window and just run, and <laughs> run to the fucking police station. So, dude, that's 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 the whole point. He's a, he, nobody's ever done that in film. He actually dismembers and rips, pulls thing apart in memory of the bird that the conquistador crushed, or 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 busted its wings, and you know he wanted he went to see if the kid would heal it. He's reliving these memories. Like at one point, the conquistador in the film had a dagger and said, "I'll show you something you've never seen because you don't know what a dagger is." And he just wants to fuck with the kid. This is back then in the 1600s. But the, the, the conquistador is wearing a cloak. And the conquistador goes, these things hurt. You know, this, this watch this. I'll cut my own hand off. Like, I want to show you what death and I want to show you that you can repair things. And he goes, he swings at his hand, but he hides his hand beneath his quilt, his, his cloak. And it freaks the kid out, Hollow Man, when, a kid, when he was human. He's like, oh my God, and reaches to heal it, like reaches to heal his hand. And the guy simply pulls his own hand out from behind his cloak and holds it out and goes like that and looks at the kid and smiles. He's like, see, it's an illusion. Like he, he's, he ends up spending a lot of time with the kid back then, but the, it's a rad memory the kid has when, he, when the guy faked cutting, the conquistador fake cutting his hand off and he goes like that real slow. And the conquistador goes, see, it's just an illusion. Your people are idiots and pagan you know natives we are an intelligent more civilized society and, and we know about tricks we know about illusions that's what he did to the kid but what's rad in the movie is at the end in the mansion hollow man is going down a hallway and one dude with a shotgun gets the jump on hollow man and shoots randomly boom and it blows hollow man's hand off and there's a rad scene where because hollow man's wearing his blanket boom hollow man looks at the guy and, and the guy is looking at hollow man like like that had to have hurt, right? You know, I just blew your hand off. And you see Hollow Man hand, put his hand out of his, out of, from under his cloak, you see his hand actually growing, going out of bugs. And Hollow Man, it's the creepiest thing because Hollow Man looks over at the guy when his hand fully comes in. You see Hollow Man go, just like the Conquistador did. And the dude with the shotgun's all, go fuck. And then you cut and then there's something else. So there's, he's constantly reliving the past with that Conquistador guy. And, um, and the only time he feels he can remember the past is when he's hanging out with the mom and son in the film. And that's the touching part of the film, is that this super being who has no other purpose anymore, it could have had a, you know, that's super sad, super sad. But now he's, he gets to relive cool moments with that mom and son, relive his past. That's an important part of the storyline is that he's, being able to remember the past and remember um, individuality, remember morality, to remember a time before he was this monstrous kill, vigilante machine. And so I think that this is a rad thing, rad movie. 
because of all this weird porn, uh, child crap going on in, in the in pedophile rings and stuff, Jeffrey Epstein, how rad do you introduce a, a supervillain like this who is the most terrifying thing? He can get to anyone anywhere. He could kill the president of any country if he if he so felt that that was a part of the problem. Um, <clears throat> he lives, he's like a superhero. And uh, um, he saves the FBI agent a couple times from getting shot in that house at the end. Like, he knows how to be a normal, and you're probably wondering what he would do if he was walking down the street in Beverly Hills on his way to kill somebody, and a cop pulled him over and was going to arrest him for vagrancy. What would he do? He would, in that situation, he'd probably backhand a cop unconscious, fall into a bunch of cockroaches, go into a storm drain, and disappear. Um, because we got to keep him off the radar. I have to keep him come up with a, a, a viable reason why this character doesn't pop up on anybody's radar. He does go through trash bags and look for clothes. He wears clothes. He even washes clothes by hand in his storm drain because he remembers doing it with his mom back in the village. He washes, it's a part of his MO. He washes clothes, he puts them on so he doesn't smell like a hideous dead body monster. Um, yes, he does collect money to use the bus. He fucking uses the bus. I know that sounds funny, but could, do we really, are we really going to believe he's going to walk across an entire town with a blanket looking like a bum barefoot? How's he going to get through Beverly Hills? How's he going to get through, how's he going to get through Malibu looking like that? So to some degree, we got to give him real things to help him pass, pass as human. Um, he always has sunglasses on, his hair's ratty. Um... He could mumble if somebody said, how's it going, bud? He could be like, mm -hmm. he could make some sound, I think. So he knows how to bullshit the, the, the public so he can get by. He keeps a little bit of money and change in his, in his sweatpants. Um, what else can I tell you about him? Uh, I think he even, he might be okay with stealing clothes from Goodwill, like the dumpsters out back with clothes in it. He, he'll go in there and take clothes. I don't think he really cares about theft. He's not a guy that gives a shit about theft. Uh, what else is there about him? Um, at some point, would be, what would be really cool is if he had a handler, a human who knows what he is. I, I put that in the story originally, like a cab driver. Originally, I had a cab driver that drives him places, but that that's pushing it. That's pushing it, like a cab driver that he helped. You know. Then we're getting into the story of The Shadow with Alec Baldwin. Where it's like, I saved you, taxi cab man, so you gotta drive me around. I don't really like, he, he, we gotta maintain um, Hollow's innocence. That he is a, he is a being of, of, of focus. He's not a, he's not a, he's not a, he's not a, a subterfuge guy. He doesn't sit in the cab going, I'm getting a free ride to go kill a bunch of people. He's like Michael Myers, if anything. But, um, but there is somebody who could help him. Like a, a caseworker in the area who knows what he is, who was saved by him that maybe, be, maybe comes to him and finds him on the street and tells him things that he should know, like, hey, they're looking for a guy with a red blanket. You're going to need to switch to a blue blanket. Like, I know that, that we're getting into superhero territory and it's a little bit hokey, but I was thinking he could use somebody as a handler that helps him out or, and, and warns him of things. But either way, the FBI agent by the end of this film is definitely an ally of his, and she knows what he is, and she will... She will divert investigations away from him now. So, dude, if you if you put this together right, we could forget the cab driver or the case driver and go straight to the FBI girl, who is straight up gonna make sure he <laughs> he is never caught. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, that's that's fine enough for me as a handler. She could go to his storm drain, and and get him to become hollow man and 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 she could go hey hey big man <laughs> it's me <laughs> i'm here to warn you of shit there's a new gang or there's some people looking for you or there's a new fed on the case that i can't control like you need to relocate like she could there it's possible this this hollow man could it could be a solid a solid vigilante nightmare superhero and another question you're probably thinking is how would he work with the marvel universe or the x-men or dc Yes, he could work with those people, but it would have to involve children in some way for his, his purpose in the story to matter. And, you know, honestly, during uh, part two of the Avengers, uh, Loki and the aliens attacking, in, in, in the story, Hollow Man would be in the ghetto <laughs> or, or taking out a couple of aliens simply because they're threatening children in the area. Like, all you would need is for Hollow Man to see one kid running 
and a laser blast blowing shit up for him to flip out and Hollow Man would leap a hundred feet up into the air onto one of those hover cars, hover skis and, and start tearing it up. So yeah, <laughs> he's he could work with the MCU. He could work with creatures like this. He's a lot like Morbius, the the living vampire. In fact, I think he would like. I think him and Morbius could get along. Um, I think they would cross paths and probably wouldn't want to screw with each other. So yeah, Hollow Man can work with them. Um, and then of course there is the issue of the Hulk. The Hulk. Um, uh, Hollow Man is a lot like the Hulk. When he becomes Hollow Man, he turns into an adult. And the reason why is because at one point the Conquistador said to him, I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you. I'm an adult. You're just a punk, pagan-ass kid. And I'm going to torture you and I'm going to get you to heal me. Like So that's why he turned into an adult. Um, that's kind of thin, but I would like... It could be a lot deeper. Why does he turn into a, a six-foot or six-foot-two adult? Why? Why? So, and I think it's because of the adult factor versus the kid factor. I think that something the Conquistador said to him or ingrained in his memory made him turn into an adult. Because he could have been just a superhero kid, but how much cooler if he's a six foot two, pale, nightmarish, some Central American god. <laughs> so anyway, give the movie some thought. Um, uh, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, and remember, his MO is horror. This is a horror film, dude. This is not a superhero film. This is more closely like The Crow. Um, the Crow. And we got to make it believable how he gets around town with people seeing him, knowing him, and him not having to interact. I'm sure around the neighborhood people say he doesn't talk, he can't talk. And they're like, yeah, but he always wears sunglasses. I wonder what his eyes look like. And everybody will be like, we don't know. And don't bother him, because I've seen him push a dude to the ground once. Like... He has anger issues. Like, that's what people would say about him in the area. And so he wouldn't get fucked with a lot by anybody. Oh, and his other superpower is that he can see within a one-block range around him what any cockroach is seeing at the very moment. So what he does in his normal time at night when he's got nobody specific to kill, he wanders out um, New York and goes to different boroughs and neighborhoods, sits down and lets his cock um, and just meditates and can see what all cockroaches in the area see. And... And if he sees some some drug addicts put tying their kid up, putting him in a closet, you'll see him like kind of go, mm. and and like and another bum could be sitting next to him talking, and going, you know, and that's when my wife, look, you want something to drink, and Hollow Man will just get up and walk towards that apartment building, <laughs> go into the alley, look up, maybe jump from fire escape to fire escape to get up to their window, and then he would turn into cockroaches, go in there either beat everybody and terrify them and then set the kid free or he could kill them but anyway rad superhero dude give it some give it some thought give it some thought and let me know what i can add you know